Well, right, it's time to bring you the headlines on the papers across Nigeria today. And we have really interesting headlines across the papers right now. We have joining us, as usual, managing editor, Gloom TV, Adele Adio. Good morning, Adele. Good morning. Thank nice you to for see you. And Barak Same to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we would have meat every other day. Uh, well, yeah. well, 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 we have to take that and, behind, and, behind, and, the, behind and, the cameras. And it's a breakfast show. <laughs> yeah, it's a breakfast show. <laughs> so, but how, how do you eat meat uh, on the, as breakfast? No, no uh, I, uh, we should ask Nero. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's begin with the new telegraph now. Sagi on INEC budget, Buhari will fund 2019 election regardless of National Assembly approval. The Senate, we're not playing politics with election budget. In INEC, Nigeria's uh, voter population now 81.5 million people. You know, I find the squabble, mm -hmm. you know, around this um, INEC budget issue, you know, um, rather amusing um, because... For, for what you want to think about the National Assembly, and I know they've come under a series of criticism, um, even though the numbers and the bills in which they have put in place is a different reality. But if you as an executive knew beforehand, in fact, from the day you swore into, you were sworn into office, mm. you knew that there was going to be another election in exactly four years from that day. Um, <coughs> Why they did not include it in the, 20 in the 2018 budget, budget exactly. is a mystery to me. Mm. And then you ramped it up in June, and now we want to paint the National Assembly black for a job that you should have done at the right time. Mm. I mean, let, let's, 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 let's call a spade what it is. The executive should actually have taken decisive steps to look into the issues critically mm. and included that in the budget. Because now what they're doing is the executive is not just saying that the National Assembly should provide a budget. What they're saying is to remove monies from certain areas mm. and, and divert, divert it into the budget. Too, exactly. that, that's, that's going to take a lot of work. Mm. That's going to take a lot of debate. If you wanted that to happen, why didn't you do that early enough, mm. for goodness sake? Exactly. And stop all of these things that we want to try to play <laughs> somebody black or plain. Uh, and, and you know, I, uh, it, it's reminiscent of the regular saying that if you fail to plan, mm. then that is tantamount to uh, planning, planning to fail. To fail. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, moving on. APC youths boo governor, attack convoy. Alleging position of commissioner, a party condemns action. Uh, this is uh, in a do state. Mm. Uh, Godwin Obaseki was uh, somewhere at Irua in the, in the, in the central senatorial district, and youths booed him. I wonder... Uh, well, and there is a sense in which you are very familiar with that terrain, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Benin, Benin, is like, uh, Benin is like my home. Uh, Those mm. state is uh, ancestrally my, my place of uh, origin. But it's all right, let's move on. NBS, Nigeria's capital importation hits uh, $5.38 billion. Portfolio investment spores inflow by 135.7%. Well, 2017 had about want to paint the national assembly black for a job that you should have done at the right time mm. i mean let, let's 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 call a spade what it is the executive should actually have taken decisive steps to look into the issues critically mm. and included that in the budget because now what they're doing is the executive is not just saying that the national assembly should provide a budget what they're saying is to remove monies from certain areas mm. And, and divert, divert it into the budget. Too, exactly. that, that's, that's going to take a lot of work. Mm. That's going to take a lot of debate. If you wanted that to happen, why didn't you do that early enough, mm. for goodness sake? Exactly. And stop all of these things that we want to try to play <laughs> somebody black or plain. Uh, and, okay. and you know, I, uh, it, it's reminiscent of the regular saying that if you fail to plan, mm. then that is tantamount to uh, planning, planning to, to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, moving on. APC youths boo governor, attack convoy. Alleging position of commissioner, a party condemns action. Uh, this is uh, in a do state. Mm. Uh, Godwin Obaseki was uh, somewhere at Irua in the, in the, in the central senatorial district, and youths booed him. I wonder. Uh, well, and there is a sense in which you are very familiar with that terrain, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Benin, Benin, is like, uh, Benin is like my home, a do mm. state is uh, ancestrally. My, my place of uh, origin. But it's all right, let's move on. NBS, Nigeria's capital importation hits uh, $5.38 billion. Portfolio investment spores inflow by 135.7%. Well, 2017 had about uh, 12, over $12 million of inflow from uh, outside. I mean, you know what um, is, is being said that Nigeria is a portfolio state? Mm. 
um, which means the kind of investment that comes into Nigeria is a briefcase investment, which is which goes into um, largely the money market. Exactly. You know, basically, and not put. And it can go and once there is trouble, they pull it out. They, 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 they are never loyal. Mm. They are very, very brutal. The moment you know there's you know, a political mood or, or something doesn't just add up, they pull out their monies almost immediately, leaving your economy in absolute ruins. So we shouldn't be, be excited, you know, that we're attracting portfolio investments. Mm. It's the portfolio investments are just for men who want to make money. It should be FDI. It should be direct foreign investments yeah. where people are exchanging skills, where we're creating jobs mm. um, in, in its thousands, because that's what the Nigerian people need yeah. and not people who make uh, uh, quick monies from the money market. Okay, let's just do a run through some of this. Mortgage Bank 6, 500 billionaire recapitalization fund. That's the Federal Mortgage Bank. And uh, eight women, still day old babies, nine children. Uh, this happened in the, uh, in the southeast. Uh, Kogi agricultural <coughs> policy is creating new billionaires, uh, uh, the governor there is saying. And 16 dying in Niger, Anambra auto crash. 14 escaped death in Nondo. It's really sad. Either Kabir bleak celebration for Abuja IDPs. All right, these are some of the headlines of the New Telegraph. All right, it's time now to take a look at the front page of the Punch newspaper. And the Punch leads off with uh, uh, the Buhari Tinubu uh, debacle. Uh, more like, um, you know, a boxing, uh, you know, contest. And they say Tinubu versus Saraki. Mm -hmm. Talk about 2023 presidency premature. That's coming from the All Progressives Congress. Tinubu shouldn't think. North will support him in 2023. That's coming from Adebanjo. And it's not a crime to be ambitious. And that's also coming from <laughs> Junaid Mohammed. Well, I mean, I, I totally agree with him that it's not um, a crime, you know, to be ambitious. Mm -hmm. Anybody can aspire um, to want to be president of the country come 2023. So mm -hmm. he's... His, um, Beyond that, you have to plan his, ahead. His yeah, exactly, and, and legitimate. And, in, and you have in, to do in, the politics. You know, in, you in know. a situation where it, it has to do with the issue of zoning, where the southeast is looking forward to 2023 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. after uh, Buhari, and you know that there were statements credited to the president at uh, sometime recently who said that, well, the future of the southeast in being presidency <laughs> lies in his, <laughs> his, in his next, uh, in his next uh, to, tenure. To, to be very honest with you, I, I think the 2019 elections, the southeast is, is clearly in play. Hmm. Um, you, you look at the body language, you look at the newspaper headlines coming from the southeast, it seems to have toned down a little bit. Hmm. Uh, I, I think they are, they, are, they are willing to play some more politics now hmm. Hmm. Um, to secure their interest in, in 2023. Hmm. Um, but to be fair, I have always argued for meritocracy, but if we have to play, if zoning is what we have found ourselves being in the country today, I think the Southeast have a fair shot. I think they deserve um, a shot at the presidency. It's been mm. long overdue. Mm. And whatever they can do, um, if they have to form the alliances they need to form, mm. I think, I, I honestly think that they should work hard at this and see that 2023 becomes a reality for them. The, the Southwest have had um, a bite of the cherry. Let the people of the Southeast have um, mm. a run mm. at this. Mm. Uh, and let's see what, um, and I believe that there are competent people in that region, people with a worldview, people who can uh, contribute to national development, and it would be suiting for them to have, um, probably could heal the wounds um, mm. of, of the civil war and the fact that they feel marginalized from this country. Mm -hmm. um, so if you ask me, I think they are the ones who, who deserve a shot at it, but we, are they willing to play the politics? Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, another, that's, that's another good question. question. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, another headline here. Buhari demonstrated fitness for second term by trekking 800 meters. <laughs> and, and someone... someone that was after uh, the prayers. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and someone you know, asked... Will, will that translate to, um, you know, economic prosperity? Will that translate to, um, uh, you know, infrastructure development and all of that? Let, let, let me be very honest with you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously thinking um, of a career in, in political strategy. <laughs> um, because sometimes when I see the, the kind and the quality of the messaging, mm. you know, that comes from the, the communication or the strategy team of certain government officials, I, 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 I squabble and I laugh. Because this, I'm, this is supposed to be um, some, some, you know, strategy stunt. The president walked 800 meters, mm. shows he's ready and fit. For goodness sake, for goodness <laughs> sake, there is, there is nowhere in the world where walking 800 meters is supposed to be a standard mm. um, for being the school prefect mm. in a secondary school, talk more of the president of a country. Um, I keep on saying this. 
talk about the achievements of Mr. President. Mm. Drill hard. I mean, Tolo Ogunlesi tries to do a little bit of that. Drill hard. Much as you don't, some people don't like the administration, mm. you can't deny the fact that they've put certain things in ground. Yes. And they've done incredible work in certain areas. So, so those are the that, messages that should you be need the to message amplify. To be sold Stop, to Stop the telling me mm. that somebody walked 800 meters and that makes him ready for... Come and, on, you and, can do and, better than that. And... Mm. and and do not think that Nigerians have become so unintelligible as to buy, you know, a <laughs> thing like this, I mean, you know, I mean, quite frankly. I mean. <laughs> All right, uh, Buhari rules out scrapping of NYSC, observes Salah Indaura. Well, um, you know, in view of the, you know, challenges, security challenges that we've been having, you know, there have been, you know, pockets of calls that, okay, why do we not, uh, you know, scrap it and all of that? But uh, the president is saying, look, that's that's a no-go area. Yeah, I, I don't. Um, I don't think you know that um, the NYC scheme mm. should be scrapped entirely. Yeah. Um, we need some sort of a national scheme that brings people together. Mm. What I would argue for is 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 something more um, pragmatic and productive that people can put or young people leaving schools can put that one year into something that is, um, that is measurable, mm. that adds value to the economy and societies across board. Um, because this system, as it's currently structured, looks like it's no longer meeting its objectives. Mm. Um, people redeploy at every time they get to the camp. There, there's hardly any integration from people. People go into villages with their biases. They don't integrate with the locals in that place. So the objective of national integration, in which it was set up to achieve, mm. um, doesn't seem like that is being achieved at the t as we speak. So they need to look into it critically, rejig it, um, revitalize it, mm. and, and see how we can turn this national scheme into mm. something. A whole but lot but, more but looking at it from the other side, we've we've seen we've seen uh, different instances where uh, youth core members travel out of their state and region for the first time, get to another region of the country, getting to know what the cultures there are, and then even getting married. We've seen that recently. We've seen that before and all of that. So when it comes to social integration, I, I guess that is still meeting its objective oh, from that window. Yes, yes. You know, like I said, it, it worked very well mm. before. Now, the moment you pick up 80% of people who pick up a call-up letter from the, from the southwest or the east that they are, that they are sending to Meduguri, uh, Kanu, Yobe, Katsina, mm. The first thing your family, they hold a meeting very quickly. Your family members hold a quick <laughs> meeting. But, but, that, but isn't that much of more of a perception? Because the we've, seen, we've seen those who, who, those who, travel, who, who live to serve in, in Sokoto, for instance, and they say, ah, why Sokoto? And then they get to Sokoto and be like, ah, this, place is, exactly. this is wonderful. Exactly. And you see, I, All I right, <laughs> we, we, we have to move on now. Uh, the Na Nation newspaper is the next paper now. Governors yet to submit proposal for new wage. That's the minimum wage. And committee hasn't agreed on figure. Says Ngigi. This, this boils back down to what you were saying about the issue of communication. The Minister of, uh, of Labor recently said that very soon, in fact, they were, they were targeting September for new minimum wage you know, to emerge. And if at this point they've not agreed on figures, then what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, listened, I listened to um, 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 Adam Ogarba, who's running for president, mm. who argued one time about a, a national productivity council mm. that measures the productivity um, of the country and that council sits with the private sector, the labor, the workers, all fully represented in mm. that board and they can come together to, to agree on what um, some sort of a, a wage bill across board can be. Um, if you sit in your office, two, three people, mm. and decide for whether political reasons or whatever reasons to shoot up the wage bill to say 50,000 or 60,000 that is being touted without considering the rippling effect in the economy and whether or not states can afford to pay that kind of amount, which they can, as we speak, afford to pay that kind of amount, mm. whether the private sector will be willing to pay staff, their staff, that amount, or they are going to shed workers because they cannot meet that obligation. Or, or even state governments. Or even state governments. Okay. So, so Let, let's just do a run through because of time. Uh, Buhari to inaugurate $250 million brewery in Ogun State and women commit suicide in Lagos. Jimobi urges calm as NURTW chair dies. That's really sad. In 11 die in either Cabrillo Day accident. A whistleblower mm -hmm. policy yields 13.8 billion naira from uh, tax evaders. And I'm having a great time. Lester 
at Leicester, right? That says maybe. All right. All right. Uh, Daily Sun newspaper, of course, uh, the whistleblowing policy is what uh, leads uh, federal government rakes in 21 billion naira, 378 million dollars, and 27,800. Uh, pounds uh and that's it coming from the federal government so okay. there is a sense in which it is um you know yielding some good results isn't it i mean i don't i don't want to 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 you know pour sand in clean water mm. you know <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know but then you know two questions i like to ask you you, you generated um 12 billion naira. so mm. what Mm. 21 Tw 21 so mm. what 21 billion because it's not translated it has to translate in some meaningful development for the people yes but here's the sad part as long as you keep generating naira so whether it's the firs telling you we have increased money in naira mm. or whether or the it's customs. the customs telling you we have mm. increased money in xyz naira mm. it amounts to absolutely nothing because your major infrastructure purchased in dollars mm. so the naira means absolutely nothing mm. at the end of the day it, it can't do anything it's your ability in fact that's why your productivity is measured in the international market by how much dollars you can mm -hmm, attract mm -hmm. and every transaction you're going to do whether it's it's, it's power works every infrastructure requires mm. dollars so at the end of the day it means very little and, and and above all the 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 common man on the streets how that translates to his comfort his yes. convenience and all of that is what uh, they want to see yeah I, and and you know sometimes they also say well the economy is um, you know recuperating we are you know out of recession you know and all of that but again when you go out in practice <laughs> and <laughs> find out in well you, yes <laughs> You know, otherwise, it's, it's what I may call yeah, economic, I mean, I, I, economic, I listen to, economic I, romanticism I, I listen to Dr. of voodoo Yemi. economics. <laughs> I listened to Dr. Yemi recently of, of the NBS, mm. um, you know, who, who still expressed, um, you know, some cautious optimism, um, you know, of, of the state of the economy, mm. um, who argued that more work needs to be done. Um, it's not yet happy moments as we speak. A lot more needs to be done to move us completely mm -hmm. out of the vulnerable state. Um, so, so a lot of a lot of work needs to be done, and let's not celebrate and rest on our hands. Okay. All right, federal government uh, failed abysmally in southeast. That's coming from the governors of the southeast. Um, I rejected overtures to replace Equity Maro. That's uh, coming from Abari Bear. And uh, well, that's about it on okay. uh, the list. Let's move to the Vanguard newspaper now. Federal government has failed our zone in projects. And southeast governors are okay. saying this. Uh, mm. <laughs> you were saying earlier that it seemed, it seemed, there seemed to be some level of unity. You know, <laughs> you know leaders, they're coming together. It's untrue. They are playing cheap politics. Fasha Lai and Lai Mohammed are saying this. Our challenge at National Assembly over zonal intervention projects, Abari Bey is saying this. And on 2019, presidency replies Tambowal says Buhari physically fit for second term. And our parties lack leadership qualities, Obasanjo is saying this. A UN demands swift justice for perpetrators of Boroni killings. In Nigeria, protests global piracy reports blame international politics. <laughs> So when, when, when it is good, Nigeria has improved and all of that, everybody celebrates. But when there's a dent every time, most of the times, either the military or the police or, the, or different government agencies always reject the, the, the figures. Yeah, I, mean, I, I wonder why we always do that. We're always um, skeptical about looking in the mirror. And um, like I keep saying, you know, th there's this... There's this idea or mentality or culture mm -hmm. in our public service, you know, that when somebody criticizes you or points out something you're doing wrong, the person automatically becomes your enemy. We yeah, have a very thin skin mm -hmm. um, for criticism rather than look at the issues um, and, 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 and look critically about what the critique is actually about right. and see where you can make necessary adjustments or even take, I mean, take, 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 pop, take public correction. Especially when it but is... comes idea or mentality or culture mm -hmm. in our public service, you know, that when somebody criticizes you or points out something you're doing wrong, the person automatically becomes your enemy. We yeah, have a very thin skin mm -hmm. um, for criticism rather than look at the issues um, and, 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 and look critically about what the critique is actually about right. and see where you can make necessary adjustments or even take, I mean, take, 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 pop, take public correction. Especially when it yeah, is constructive. Just, uh. Sure, it's constructive, but, but this idea where we always want to be arrogant about the office that we sit in, we know it all kind of syndrome, and, 
and you know the person talking is either paid by the opposition party <laughs> or is an enemy of the state. Or has an ulterior or has motive. An ulterior motive. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not going to take us anywhere. All right. Let's look at it this day now. This day happens to be the last paper we're taking yeah. a look at. Uh, with 800 meter walk, Buhari fit for 2019. That's coming from the presidency. Well, we talked about that earlier. Uh, consumer <laughs> silk Usoro uh, takes charge of the bar association. Um, uh, of course, uh, uh, the full name now, I'm trying to uh, get the full name, Paul Usoro. Us yeah. Is he yeah. Usoro or eh? Usoro? Eh? I think it's a Kwebom, eh? Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, interesting I was, African names. The, 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 the kind of news um, that broke out after the elections of the NBA were mm. quite sobering for me. In fact, it almost had a soporific effect on me at some point because if, if the Nigerian Bar Association can hold an election and you have these kind of statements coming out of irregularities, manipulation, um, from, the bar from the bar association, um, it makes you want to lock yourself in a room and consider relocating to Benin Republic. <laughs> you know, because if, if, we, if, if, if the learned colleagues cannot get it right, then what hope do we have um, for the political class that they always like to criticize, mm. you know, at the end of the day? So. Um, uh, I mean, I, I think Chino Achebe was right in, in, in his 60s or 70s. The house is falling. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's sad. It's really okay. sad that we've got it to this point. Uh, All right. We, we have to That's end it, it here mm. now. Mm. And uh, certainly, Ayodele Adio, Managing Editor, Gloom TV, thanks for coming on the program. We'll be, we'll be keeping you for the next discussion right now.